Sup guys, welcome back on the channel. Today I'm answering some of your comments and messages I got on several platforms. I'm Richard and this is 2D Printing for Money. Let's start with Thomas that asks, I have two printers. How hard is it to manage a farm of many printers? From my experience, depending on what you're printing, you can manage between 10 to 15 printers alone. Beyond that, you need to optimize operation with remote software, scheduling, and hire someone to take care of 3D printing. You have to choose if you want to run your business or become a full-time 3D printer technician. Paul wonders, how do you get clients? <laughs> I get this question a lot, I'll make a dedicated video in the future. I get clients like everyone does in business, telephone calls, emails, leads and proper copywriting. I don't advertise too much because I have a personal conflict with ads. I find that ad campaigns favor more the advertising company more than the ad owner. Tori is very specific asking what I print. In the last year, mainly prototypes and batches under 300 pieces. Dylan is curious and wants to know, how did I start? Uh, my story is nothing of extraordinary. At first, I started like a side business doing uh, a project for a local company. I was in charge of design and had a local guy do the 3D printing. I found out at the time that he was charging way too much, so I said, what the heck, I'll buy my own 3D printer. From there, I completed that project and I considered it to print stuff down from Thingiverse, but I saw a race to the bottom from others already doing it. So I specialized in some niches with targeted products that solved a need or a problem. From there, I grew a printing farm to a point I was running more printers I could personally handle. After a couple of years of continuous growth, nowadays I'm considering to migrate to a different production approach. Amanda wants to know which printer is the best one to start with. Tough question, I made a video on the topic, the short answer is to get the one your budget allows without cheaping out. Georgie asks, best filament you recommend? Uh, polycarbonate with blended carbon fiber, if you can find it. That stuff is beyond impressive. Not cheap, but tough AF. Robert wants to know, do you mold your printers? I found out that cheaper the printer, more mods it requires to perform to my standards. In my case, I have that modifications only if they increase significantly speed or quality. Andrea asks a related question. There are tons of mods for my Ender 3. Which one should I mount? Gee, I'm sure there are tons of valid mods for your under tree, but there are some key points for understanding if a mod is a good one. Community support, real life results with before and after pictures, and the simpleness of the piece. If the piece is too complicated, it will give you problems during maintenance. James is very straightforward. Can you make a living with 3D printers? Yes, if you understand and serve the market with a specific product wanted or needed by the consumer. Lisa says, quality or price? Quality mainly. If the customer can't afford my work or wants to cheap out, I won't work with him. Mark wants to know, how do you manage multiple printers? Um, Octofarm is a great solution. I found also that multiple web interfaces as Fluid and Mainsail OS are great alternatives. For orders and production planning, a bunch of Excel. Carl asks, do you design your products? Nowadays I do, or if I don't have the time to design new stuff, I outsource the drawing tasks. Laura writes, would you recommend 3D printing as an income? Sincerely, I don't. I recommend to find a solution for a problem, make a product for it, and if 3D printing is the best production method, then 3D printing it is. Gary says, in your videos, you don't talk a lot about resin printing. I fiddled with resin in the past and I found that the process is way too messy for my standards. If I get a resin project, I just outsource it to someone else. Alex asks, where should I sell my products? It really depends on your target audience. If you're doing handmade style items, Etsy is the current best place. Amazon is very powerful if you do small and medium batches and I know people that do fairly well with Facebook Marketplace and eBay. 
If you're doing custom and professional work for companies, a dedicated website is the best solution. So guys, these are some of the questions I got. If you have a question that you want to ask, just drop me a comment or DM me on Instagram. I was thinking of doing this Q&A for everybody. I got to go print some stuff. See you in the next one.